Before we look at the 4D cross product, let's look at the 3D cross product. Cross product takes two 3D vectors as inputs and spits out another 3D vector that's orthogonal to the previous two vectors. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna ignore the length of the vector. Cross product can also be used in two dimensions. Let's say we have line AB and a point C. Now, we have a vector U that's pointing from A to B and a vector V that's pointing from A to C. If we do dot product of these two vectors, based on the Z coordinate of the cross product, you can tell if point C is on one side of the line or on the other. Above AB, the Z coordinate is positive and below AB, the Z coordinate is negative. Here is the whole scene in the third dimension. Now we can move on to 4D cross product. As there is more space in the fourth dimension, the hyper cross product takes three vectors, not two, and returns a vector S that's orthogonal to all three vectors. In two dimensions, we were able to tell on which side of a line a point is, and with hypercross product, we'll be able to tell on which side of a plane a point is in three-dimensional space. So we have here a plane defined by two vectors, BA and BC, and we also have a point D. Now, if we do a cross product of these three vectors, the fourth coordinate of the cross hypercross product is gonna tell us on which side of the plane the point is. On one side of the plane it's gonna be positive and on the other side it's gonna be negative. Normal cross products can be very useful for calculating normal vectors, which are vectors perpendicular to the plane. This can be useful for many things, for example lighting. When we move to the fourth dimension, meshes are no longer made out of triangles, instead they are made out of tetrahedrons. And we can use hypercross products to calculate normals of these tetrahedrons. And as mentioned before, this can be useful for lighting. Here you can see 4D mesh rendered with Fong lighting model. As the calculation for the hypercross product is very long, I'm gonna just leave it in the description. Also, one more side note if you want to find on which side of a plane a point is, uh, there are better methods than using the hypercross product, so just keep that in mind. For example, here I'm having a plane, normal to the plane, and a vector from A to D, and taking the dot product, which also works. This video was made for the Summer of Math Exposition. Uh, thank you for watching, please subscribe, like the video, and bye!